number two of Overdrive here no, on TSN that. 4, TSN 1050. <laughs> Aaron you, you can't do that, man. That's Frank Corrado. That's Carlo Koliakbo. <laughs> Luke Wilson that? around the table. The NWO music coming in. That was yes. your request, Coco. New and World Order. We're G taking over That's Overdrive. Right. The first up boys we are. are taking over Overdrive, just like the <laughs> NWO took over the wrestling world. That's it. And we've got our friend Luke Wilson in studio. Frankie's here. Luke, how are we feeling this evening? I'm feeling good. You I'm look good. great. The mustache. You, know what, you are. Last day for the stash. I'm. Uh, it's been a journey, but I'm glad we're it's here. It's kind of glistening right now, <laughs> yeah. too, yeah. under the lights. I, uh, you I have, like, makeup on it? Oh, oh. oh. Is that true? God. I figured the last day well, I'd go just, with a bang. We just oh. had Duffy in your segment ago, and he was yeah. covered in makeup. So I was just wondering. I got no. I'm not a big makeup guy. Okay. This I man doesn't need makeup. On. Look at him. Oh, he's a stallion. Gorgeous. Sometimes if like, you need anti shine, I don't see it, man. Just <laughs> look alike. Do, do you know who Dave Babich is? Uh, I don't. He's a hockey player. He's the <laughs> godfather of the mustache. Wow. Really? He Dave would be Babbage very proud of that. He's mustache. Michael Corleone and, and Dave Jamie Babbage. Jamie McCown? <laughs> For the, the godfather of the mustache. Have you seen Dave Babbage's I mustache? I have. Dude, dude, when we finish, <laughs> Google Jamie Dave McCallan. Babbage. Okay. Dave Babbage? Yes. Can we um, get it up? Can we yeah. get it? Maybe, yeah, Joe JPL the bitch is there, right, right there. Okay. Right there. That's, Dave Babbage. That's you with hair. Look. Yeah, that I <laughs> get, the pick, get the pick of Dave that's Babbage. That is and you that's, with that's hair. That's pretty good. So, that's what Luke is kind of like. That's me in 20 years. Yeah, I take that back. If you keep that muzzy, if you keep that muzzy, that's what you're going to look like. Yeah, this bad boy is at 1 a.m. tonight when I get home from uh, Jay's show. It's going. <laughs> After <laughs> winning that, your pick? Yes. Oh, for sure. So This we'll, is a layup. We'll, we'll get Luke's pick in just a moment, but there is a tweet that James Duthie sent out just moments ago. It's a picture of the guys on the o Overdrive. Who we part of the TSN hockey panel, Leafs Kraken yeah. tonight. Yeah. And joining them, it looks like it'll be Al's brother. I mean, that's at ridiculous. least in part. That is your nemesis. <laughs> What's ridiculous? What is he doing? They, yeah. You know, he's got cut a shoulder over mouth. I, I have actually heard, Luke, that Al's brother and Tequila will be doing some segments as well tonight on the. Uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. Just, oh. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm just like, Al's brother's doing just, football <laughs> picks out. <laughs> I just Does he do enough of that. I, it, it, it could be something that TSN will But explore. could you imagine if Al's brother goes to O, like during the first period of mission? He's like, yeah. actually, Step aside. I got this. I got some info here. And he just yeah. rattles off. True. Like a bunch of analytics from the first period. Yeah, the well, craziest thing that's happened on this Overdrive show was Hayes bringing this man onto his team. <laughs> that <laughs> is absurd. <laughs> it is. You. There it is. You're one of your it famous is. audio clips. Yes. <laughs> it's absurd. I mean, it, you remember last year, this guy booted me off O-Dog's team. We were down big when I joined, came back, and then me and Hayes went on a huge run, won everything. And Hayes brings he was nip, he was coming back. And now it's gonna be a bloodbath. You saw it was plus two, now we're already plus seven. After nine it'll be plus eight. And it'll never be the same. So we'll yeah. get your pick a little bit. You no, know it's funny. You know what's funny? When he first came in here, what did you say to him? You played in the Super Bowl. Well, yes. And you seeing you seeing Al's brother. He won a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl. Played in multiple Super Bowls. One of the great Canadian football players in the history of our country. And Al's brother's like, oh no, that pick's garbage. <laughs> and I'm watching, and I'm like, how do you sit there and not just knock this guy in the face? Dude, the most, the worst one was when he talked about Luke's performance in a game one time, and yeah. I can guarantee you, Al's brother was knuckles deep in a charcuterie yeah. one, while this guy was on the gridiron grinding yeah. like an uh, animal. Uh, yeah. You should have ran a, cool, a curl route there, Luke, instead of going deep. Like, what a terrible, <laughs> yeah. terrible mistake. And in a strange way, yeah. bringing him back, though, has upped my game. Because it would be the biggest embarrassment ever if I lost Sal's bro. Right. Oh, yeah, you couldn't. And uh, I mean. Couldn't come back from that. I thought I had, a couple weeks back, I owned it. It was a Jets pick. I said it was the worst pick in overdrive. <laughs> it only took Al's bro two weeks. In order to, <laughs> I right. mean, this man took Tim Boyle over Ooh. Tua to cover. What, what a was... single digit cover. Tim <laughs> he took Boyle. Tim Boyle. <laughs> Over the Miami Dolphins, Tua, Waddle, Hill, Mostert, everybody was healthy. What was the tremendous information he used for the Detroit game? It was something about the cloud coverage. Yeah, yeah. no, it was yeah. The, the, moon. the phase in of the, the moon. moon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moon. Yes, phase so, of the moon. I, I know you'll have some tremendous information of your own in a positive way. Yes. Luke, a little bit yes. later when you pick Dallas and Seattle tonight. The Cowboys, nine point favorites. And I was looking, uh, nine and a half point favorites. Nine, it's nine and a half now. Nine and a half oh, point favorites. We're That's moving. Oh, moving. It's, uh, it's moving in the right yes. direction. <laughs> okay. For me. Uh, Teaser. Yes. Jesus. Ooh. Dallas. Yes. But how about this, Dad? Dallas has played five home games this year, and they've won by an average of 29 points. Oh, yeah. Now, I know their See competition. They played? Their competition is dreadful. They're yes. beating up on Washington and the Giants a couple times, yep. the Rams and Carolina. But I am. 
confused as to how to evaluate this Dallas team and that, yeah, they're destroying garbage teams, and the teams they're playing that are good are beating them. Yes. But are they a legit contender they in the are. NFC? You believe in they Dallas? They really are. They're a legit contender. Do I Would I put them at number one right now? Absolutely not. To me, I think this weekend, Philly, San Fran will decide that. I think those two are in a category of their own. And then right after that is Dallas, and then there's kind of a slew of other – sorry – Sorry, Lions fans. I would put Dallas and Detroit kind of three and four. And then after that kind of comes everybody else. Um, but, again, if they play good ball, which right now I think they are, they can beat anybody. Like you saw that with Philly. They really hung around. Kind of had – I thought they were going to finish it there late. Philly made some nice plays. There's a couple of poor moments. We all remember that. But I think one of the things that's – you know, and I don't love this term, but – Mike McCarthy uses it a lot, and if you look at the stats of this team, they are doing it. It's complementary football. They have a tremendous pass defense. I think they're number two right now in yards given up. I mean, obviously, Deron Bland set the record for pick sixes. You've got Stephon Gilmore on their side. It mirrors well with Micah Parsons. But what's happening why they're blowing these teams out is because they're being able to score points. Teams are behind. we got to throw the ball, and they can't. So unless you get into this like really grimy football game where you're running the ball both ways, you can slow this offense down, they're always going to be in games. What have you made of Dak's season? Like, He's are been you... incredible. Yeah. MVP. Is he, is he, is he MVP. MVP. He's in the combo. Oh, for sure. For sure. Would you be campaigning more for McCaffrey at this point to be the MVP Personally, over Dak? yes. But there's one moment I would say that I would sit, put Dak in there, and it was the end of the Eagles game. If he handles that correctly with that drive, I don't know if you guys remember this, mm-hmm. took the sack, it was kind of a very strange ordeal. If he handles that end of the game situation like an MVP player and they beat Philly, to me he's probably sitting, I mean that bumps Philly to 10, and, or 10 at 9 and 2 at the moment, he's, he's probably sitting as a, a, the best odds to win it. Just so, that final play, sir. I don't know if you guys saw, and Joe from the bridge, if you can find that video of Christian McCaffrey that went viral of his bruises after the, oh, that game. Like, yeah, did you see that, Luke? It's yeah. basically like, and I want to ask you, this, this guy bleeding yeah. on his elbows, <laughs> bruises on his biceps and triceps, and this guy's scoring touchdowns every week. Like, He's a monster. If, if that's not enough to solidify the MVP in the leg, I don't know what is. You I played agree. the game. Like, how... How does that feel on a game-to-game basis for a running back that takes contact every play? Again, I totally agree. And I was saying this on Jay a couple uh, nights ago. I was like, to me, you know, Hertz is obviously the leader, but CMC should be right in the conversation. And Dak should be too, you know? And you talk about how that feels. It's kind of a strange ordeal where in the moment you feel nothing. 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 Even after, like, you win a ball game, especially if it's a big one, it's just like, man... Pure jubilation. You're in the locker room afterwards. I mean, it's epic. Everything's numb. Everything's numb. And then the next morning when you roll out of bed, it's like you were hit by a bus. (laughs) That's it. And what's funny, and I, like, laugh about this with guys. Here it is. Look at the video. Look at this guy. Yeah. Biceps and triceps are purple and blue. Oh, Look at his there's, bed. There's blood on yeah. his bed. <laughs> his bed is like That's full pretty, yes. of blood. That looks, from those his look elbow. like nice sheets. Those, that may yeah. be, might be bamboo right there. You're going <laughs> to laugh, but the blood on the sheets is very common. That's like an NFL thing. Look at his arms. <laughs> oh, that's not common. Like, look at this. Yeah, I mean, on both arms, this guy is bruised and battered everywhere. That's he what AK in, looks like after a yeah, tricep he workout. He is in terrible physical condition, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. Yes, he really he needs is. to. He really needs to hit the gym. But yeah, yes. that's that's tough. I, I, I'm sure you've woken up so many mornings. But he would just, be worse, like because oh, yeah. the big one is getting tackled. Like guys don't understand when you have these, you know, ten, you know, even receivers. Like I look at Kelsey. Let's say it's a nine catch game. 10 catch game barring the TDs ten, that's 10 times where he's getting smoked yeah. and the O linemen obviously have it worse because every single play you have 70 snaps or 70 plays of contact but as far as like the blunt force to me like that's how you get the huge marks and the oh. running backs like McCaffrey's touching the ball on it seems like every other play for them he's, he's going to have 13 to 15 carries a, a game. game and he's going to catch another 6 7 more balls dude and he just gets he gets so many yards after that first initial contact it's yes. it, it's outrageous and speaking of running backs like your Seattle Seahawks tonight like Kenneth Walker still doubtful yeah Charbonnet is going to have to get a lot he's of carries he's a tough runner now listen to this for guy sure. i mean i remember he's like hey i'm thinking about doing fantasy football and now yeah. he's an expert breaking yeah. down the Seahawks back 
Backfield. He's on it. I love it. There you go. There you go. We're in the mix. Luke and I go way back. I do. I do. But so are you concerned about your Seahawks? Uh, Concerned. Like Geno Smith, he's not fully healthy either. Concerned about them winning? Yes. Concerned about them covering? <laughs> Absolutely Teaser. not. Teaser. There you go. Great teams. Yeah. Good teams win. Great, Great teams, teams cover. cover. For, for a while there, it was like you turn on Pat McAfee, and he's, yes. all he can talk about is the Seahawks. And he's like, this is a good team. They They're play dogs. good fundamental yeah. ball. And, and now it's like things have kind of – things are hitting for them. So – I again, I'm obviously wildly biased when I look at this team. They're six and five right now, and I don't know why. But since the dawn of time, even when we were ripping, like in my early days, we have always struggled against the Rams. Two of the five losses are once again at the hands of the Rams. I don't. I thought maybe once they moved to L.A. from St. Louis, we'd be in better shape. Absolutely not. It's gotten worse. So I kind of look at some of the losses, and it's like the Rams burned us week one, burnt, and we missed a field goal, but again, shouldn't have got to that point. The Niners beat the hell out of us last week on Thanksgiving. I thought that was kind of coming. I don't think we're at that level yet, but I really do think tonight will be a much tighter game than what people think, and Pete's a tremendous motivator. Like, I know this firsthand. He's going to be in that locker room, sitting there, like, very rarely does he ever have to play the underdog card, because... They're usually not underdogs, but when he gets to play it, it's like he loves it, eh? And John Snyder, the GM there, and the way they draft guys, like they and they've said this for, on many interviews, they look for guys to draft with chips on their shoulder that have something to prove. So you get a locker room full of guys that have this huge chip on their shoulder, and now Pete's gonna walk in there and say, "Everyone says our season's done. Gino, you're done. DK is not catching enough balls. Blah blah blah." He's gonna say it a lot more articulate than that. Yeah. And we got the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys who have beat everyone by 20. And we're going there. We got no shot, right, boys? And the whole locker room is gonna <laughs> go nuts, and they're gonna go down there. And again, do I know, think they'll win? I mean, do I have them in a pick 'em league? Yes, I think they'll win tonight. <laughs> but am I? Do I think they'll cover? One thousand percent. This team's coming out. All right. So why don't we just lock in the bridge? Lock in it. And then this will be the next thing that I think Dallas will have their hands full tonight. Again, I I think that Dak will make some plays. If you look at Dallas's defense, first off, it's run by Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is very well known in Seattle. He was our defensive coordinator when we won the Super Bowl. Right now, I would say it's not a weakness, but a weaker part of this Dallas defense would be their run defense. Now, you go look at the stats and you say, well, I think they're around 10th, 11th, somewhere in there in the league. Part of that, why I don't think it's worse, is because they're up by 25 points every game. So teams kind of get to the point where they're handcuffed and they're like, we can't run the ball anymore. So I really think your guy mm. Charbonnet tonight, and I got a feeling, Pete, our, our guy, guy, our guy, our guy Charbonnet. 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 Hey, bonjour. Okay, you said Gino's dealing with some health issues. They're gonna try and make this a really grimy kind of old school game. Hand the ball to Charbonnet. Super physical. Stop Tony Pollard. Figure out a way, whether it's Witherspoon, whether it's Woolen, to, to slow down C.D. Lamb and make Dak beat him with Ferguson and Brandon Cooks. That's That would be my guess if I was in Seattle's locker room. Dude, let me ask you something about that chip on the shoulder thing. So I understand how it works playing the opposition, right? But on a day-to-day practice days, you're in the grind with the group. A lot of guys with a chip on their shoulder, how competitive is that Like within the group, within your, your teammates? Okay, Frankie, I'm not kidding. Like Back in the day, I call it back, and I guess it was not long ago, when we had that kind of culture... Practice was a, it was nuts. <laughs> it was nuts. And like we got this is again, you can look all this up. I'm not exaggerating. We got fined the one year in OTAs because the NFL PA has all these rules where you can't practice too hard and they film everything and they'll That's watch it. Stuff. This is without pads on. Oh my goodness. And it would be like so then <laughs> the one year I always kind of laugh at this and I felt bad for Pete, but we get fined because a huge brawl broke out in OTAs. We're not even in training camp yet. So they I can't remember, I think they find like the team a day like we were in the team some money next year got even crazier just like all out brawls two days in a row like and again OTAs is supposed to be pretty chill yeah so then all of a sudden it was like a ton of money came out of people's pockets I think the owner might have got fined a little bit which she had nothing to do with it so Pete comes in and he says okay this is what we're going to do we don't need they're accusing us of cheating practicing too hard so this year in OTAs we're going to take off our helmets. He's like, we're going to do no helmets so that you guys won't go too hard. We won't get fined because if we get fined this year, 
we're at risk of losing a draft pick, and we love our draft picks. <laughs> well, I think it was might have been the first day or the second day, and this was just so unfortunate. A very young DB and a very young wide receiver doing a rep, you know, let's call it 85 90%. No one's hitting. We have no helmets on, just tagging off. Well, it's a curl route. Dude catches it and kind of like jukes one way to spin the other. Pretty traditional NFL play. Well, the DB <laughs> wasn't really paying attention to the juke and was flying like, okay, he's going to turn left. I'm just going to tag off on the right. So when he turned around, they went head to head. Oh, oh man. Nasty concussion for both of them. Again, skin on skin. One guy had to get like plastic surgery, <laughs> oh. split his head open. It was crazy. We got find a whole week of practice, draft pick. I think there was like half a million dollars to the organization. And, uh, yeah, it was it was a strange ordeal because he was trying to do the right thing. But, again, kind of goes to your competitive thing. Like, that's how you build you, a culture, though, right? Yeah, well, that's you it. Build something that lasts a long everywhere. time. For me, again, that was the most competitive place I played by far. Now, we did have the people. You got Earl Thomas. You got Sherman. You got Cam Chancer. You got Wagner in there. You know, Michael Bennett. Like, these guys are elite competitors and even Russ I think we're starting to see again now like say what you want about the guy he is one of the greatest competitors I've ever been around so it was pretty electric Luke Wilson in studio with us here on Overdrive. Aaron Karolnik, Frankie Corrado, and Carlo Koliakovo in for the usual trio who will be part of the Maple Leafs panel tonight Leafs and Kraken. You think there's any chance Aaron Rodgers actually plays yes. Luke? Really? Come on. Yes. Really? Yes. Are you serious? Come on. Oh yeah. You guys got to know this is Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> oh, this no. is Aaron Rodgers. There's no way the Jets stink. Okay. Why, would, why would the Jets allow him to play? Well, first and foremost, I think Aaron calls a lot of the shots. Prime example, Randall Cobb, Al Lazard, <laughs> Nathaniel Dal- Hackett, Daniel Dalvin, Hackett. Cook, Dalvin Cook. Even Tim Boyle was oh. his buddy in, in Green Bay. Mm-hmm. So I think Aaron's got a lot of pull going on over there. Why I think he'll come back, there's a variety of reasons. Um, and I want to like float a scenario. That's a, it's wild. It's a Hail Mary scenario, <laughs> but I'm going to float it after this. Aaron Rodgers, to me, first off, he's known in the league as a great guy. I want to put that out there. Everybody has mad respect for Aaron in the NFL as a player. I know that might not be the media version of him. But I do get the sense, I don't know him well, talked to him a few times. It, on some of the interviews, the McAfee stuff, you know, the... Uh, immunization comment from last year. Immunize. Yeah, yeah, the immunize. <laughs> you know, he's maybe got a bit of an ego, a bit of a uh, vendetta against maybe Western medicine and culture. Uh-huh. So the idea that he could tear his Achilles and stick it to the man a little bit, uh-huh. stick it to Big Pharma, I think plays a big role in him coming back. Do you have any idea about what he's doing? Like, you know what a normal rehab protocol is for all these injuries. Like, yeah. what is this? Is he in a spaceship somewhere? Sure. It, it sounds ridiculous to say that, but, like, he's doing something yes. obviously very unconventional. Yeah, he didn't that... tear his Achilles. Simple as that. No, he no, didn't. He, he must have torn is, the Achilles. This is one thing. Thing I do like, and I I think it's going to continue to you know widen this gap in the pro athlete world. But like I look at a guy, Russ was one of them. I look at a guy like LeBron. I obviously don't know LeBron, but it was like okay, as I got older, body starts getting a little more sore, and I'm like, man, I go from you know a general massage when I'm 23 to like, hey, I got two massage therapy sessions set up, an acupuncture, a dry needling person. I've got this. Like my whole week is just like, yeah putting my body back together when you have these guys that have like infinite amounts of wealth they can they have access to stuff that will be normalized 25 years from now right and i do believe like he was flying to la and then flying back on i'm sure somebody's pj maybe is i don't know chamber you mean like i mean again even that like 25 years ago was probably around to the like richest athletes of the world but to the general public was not a thing You know, even all of these things, like right now, you're looking at like, oh, you hear these float tanks, these ice baths, the cryo chambers. Like, that's the bare minimum now. Most of the NFL locker rooms, not most of them, but a lot of them have that in them. 
where I think Aaron's now on to the next thing. What that we is, don't even I don't know, know what it is. But, but I, and I understand all that, but it's been 80 days since he's tore his Achilles. No one has ever returned in the history of the National Football League in under five months. I he's, agree. If he comes back on December he's 24th, he's coming back. That will be three and a half months. He will beat anyone else by six weeks. He's Anybody? Coming back. He's 40. He's it's coming crazy. back. There's. I mean, I'm not gonna. If you're the Jets, there's you stem cells in Germany. There's a million things going on. I'm. A, I trust me when I say this, I don't know from firsthand. I got an idea. There's a lot of things out there. I've heard Germany. That's okay. the spot you go. And There's you a get lot healthy. of things you can do. You get healthy. Just say that. Yeah. This is what I'll say. I want to float this crazy idea. <laughs> okay. And I want to preface this by saying, do You're I on think live it, TV? Right? I know. Do I think it will happen? No. But we talk about the underdog. We talk about all those things, right? The NFL is made up of guys that have been underdogs for the majority of their life. I'm not talking about the all-pro guys. I'm not talking about you know people, the household names. I'm talking about the bulk of an NFL roster. The Jets are sitting at 4-7 and seven right now. They play the Atlanta Falcons this week. A winnable game. Would we all agree? With Tim Boyle? With that defense, Desmond Ritter, I don't... Are, will they win? I don't, we'll see, but is it a winnable? Are you like? Will you be shocked if the Jets manage to get a turnover no. or two and be like, okay, they snuck one out? I'd be pretty shocked, actually. Really? After, after what I saw from Tim Boyle on, I mean, on Friday, I would be stunned, actually. He's horrendous. He's not good. <laughs> but it wouldn't surprise me if they found some magical way, punt return, defense okay, so plays if they well. win the game. They're now 5-7. and seven, Yeah. And you know who's next on the, on the docket? The Houston Texans, who are probably, in my opinion, the favorite to get that seven seed. I'm not buying this Colts nonsense. I don't think Minshew and now Jonathan the Taylor's bills? out. The, I'm not counting out the Bills. I am, I've been very vocal on that. I'm not counting out the Bills. they got to win some tough games. <laughs> Typical Bills fan yeah. right there. I jumped off the bandwagon yeah. so quick. Yeah. Do, you need, do you have room on the Seahawks bandwagon? Oh, yeah. yeah we yeah, always yeah. do. <laughs> they can somehow manage to beat Atlanta. That whole locker room is going to be looking at the schedule saying, Okay, Aaron might be back. Aaron might be back next week. The, no, not for no, like in the near future. Okay. He, just, he just entered the twenty-one day okay. window. Yes, oh. in the near future, if we can, by the grace of God, a modern day miracle, <laughs> find a way to beat Houston. Now, all of a sudden, we've taken a game on Houston, who's probably going to get that seven seed, and Aaron's two weeks away, baby, and we're. It's unlikely, but I'm telling you, that's the thought process in the New York Jets locker room. Did you write the script to draft day with Kevin Costner where he's like, hey, I'll <laughs> trade for a first-round pick, then I'll get it back, I'll get a second-round pick, then I'll swap the second-round pick for multiple that's, firsts? I know it's what it sounds that's like. That's kind of what it sounds the like. The first domino here is beating Atlanta. And I will say this. Remember a couple weeks ago, probably like four weeks ago, Robert Sala was like, hey, we've played all these great quarterbacks and we've embarrassed them. Mm -hmm. If you think that this defense – Again, if they find a way to actually beat Atlanta, which is a big if, is going to sit here and say, hey, we've embarrassed every other quarterback we've played, and now we're going to let C.J. Stroud walk all over us? It's not happening. Looking at TSN4, the odds the Jets make the playoffs on FanDuel, 18-1. to 1. It's, I, yes. would take, I would take the no at the moment. There's <laughs> well, a lot well, of yeah, dominoes. No is minus but there 800, is, but yes. There's a path. There is a path, saying. and I don't think that that locker room has closed the door on the playoffs yet. So I want to go back to something you said about the Buffalo Bills, and there was some reporting done about allegations yeah. about Vaughn Miller. does not sound good for him. I haven't future, seen this. Oh. Yeah, allegations about some different domestic, uh, domestic stuff that Yikes. I don't think you'll be seeing Von Miller playing in the NFL anytime soon. That's now, that's, that's not good for the Buffalo Bills, no. of course, but he hasn't really had a major impact at all. No, he season. hasn't. So, I mean, and the on-the-field impact, say what you will about that. But the Bills, they have a bye. Then they're at Kansas City. Yep. They've got a tough schedule down the stretch. Give me the pitch as to why I should be thinking the Buffalo Bills can make the playoffs. You bet on them to make the playoffs. I, well, yeah, I know that, but he's, he's, he's the you, analyst. Yeah. I work with this guy in the morning, <laughs> yeah. and he's telling me he's jumping on the Bills. I, no, I, I, I'm actually he certain. Said he I'm would, certain. He said he would jump through that table to, 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 to be on the Bills I would. Mafia. I would jump through that table. Okay, so here's my first question. How many – For the, we're talking seven seed here. How many wins is going to get you? I think you need ten. So you, you, need, need, ten to, you, need, you need to go four and one down the stretch. Correct. And, I mean – I think that there's an argument that you could potentially sneak in with nine. I think the Colts are very fraudulent. Cleveland, Pittsburgh. There's a lot. A Pittsburgh, I actually think, will be okay now. I think they'll get to ten. How? I mean, <laughs> Matt Cannon's hey, gone. No, you're, you're right, but, like, that's not a good team. No, they, but it's they not. Just but you just need a couple win wins. You just need a couple and wins. Yeah. Cleveland's defense, like, both teams' defense will carry them. But I look at 
Buffalo, and I especially the Philly game is a prime prime example, where it's like you walk in. This it's unbelievable. You walk into Philly. I played in that stadium. Not a, not a friendly place. Okay, not a not a friendly place. It's pouring rain, and you basically dominate the number one team in the NFL for four quarters. You're throwing the ball like wild men in the rain. I mean, Hertz had 200 yards throwing. They struggled to throw the football. Like, they have all the pieces, but they cannot get out of their own way. I mean, you have you have the kicker, doink, not even doink, just shank two kicks. Mm-hmm. Brutal. You've got... You I, gave up a third and 15 from the 30-yard line. Yeah, I mean, Your boy Zacchaeus. Your boy Zacchaeus. Your boy touchdown. Zacchaeus. Yeah, it's my boy. I don't know. I was yeah. talking to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> my boy. Olamade, yeah. yeah. Well, you, yeah. Su- you support. You want to support the Bills anymore. You so. give that up. I mean, even the – and, again, I had talked about this on Jay's show, but the missed throw to Gabe Davis Ugh. in the – like that – it's something that at this point of the season should be like, okay. And Josh said afterwards, hey, that, that's a route that converts. So Gabe's got to know, like, yeah, this is cover zero. It's a route that converts, which is pretty – it's very, very standard. So They got beat against that same play against Denver. Correct. Exact same coverage. <laughs> exact same coverage. And it's funny. It was tough because, you know, sometimes I like to get too dark in, into the X's and O's. The uh, – the, the cover zero, which Jerry Judy got the PI on, they called it again against the Eagles in overtime, and it was the yeah, it was the Jalen, uh, Hurts, Jalen Hurts touchdown yeah. to win the game. What about twenty seconds left, and you're kneeling with a timeout and Josh Ridiculous. Allen? Ridiculous! That was <laughs> they iced the kicker to blow one yeah. timeout. Why? I don't get it. Why? The you guy's thrown. Ice- he's looked like Superman. <laughs> okay, all day. It's not like the rain has slowed him down. Yeah. It's like, wait, we can have three plays where we need, what, 40 yards? And here's the even crazier thing. It's not like Josh isn't mobile. So let's say we run everybody deep, and Josh makes one guy miss. We're not going to put a spy on him. I mean, maybe they do. He scampers for the first play for 15. Now, call yeah, timeout. Call timeout. You're sitting there with 10 seconds left because that'll take longer, and you're on the 40-yard line. You're sitting there going, hey, we got to get 20 yards. We still got a timeout. We got two plays. I know, buddy. Okay, like I know all this because I've been – Dissecting it so like, for so long. I'm a Bills yeah. fan, and it's frustrating tortured to watch all Bills this happen. Again, tortured. tortured. Are they Bills very, very tortured? Rick. Are they going to make the playoffs? I say no. Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to go no. Oh, dude, I thought we were on the same page here. I'm, just, I'm not saying they're, di- but like everyone's like, is the season over? Is it done? They just. It's like you want. I keep saying every week. I'm like, hey, this team's. And I said it last year. Like it's a bad football team with great players. And it's like at this they make point, made too many mistakes. What is exactly? Like, are they all of a sudden going to stop making mistakes? And even if they do for one week, do you have any faith in them to be consistent with it? And like, what's the schedule? By KC, Dallas, Chargers, and I know they play Miami, Miami and they play a bad team in there too. That should be an and they got to go four and one. They do, and they will. I and mean, when they do loop, I'm going to come in. I'm going to jump through that table right. for you. I hope you're right. And I'm not even the Bills fan here. That's Carlos. So. You know what's going to be a tough one for them is Dallas. Dallas At home, though. Da- Dallas at home versus Dallas on the road is a completely different team. Agreed, but especially after my Hawks beat Dallas That's, tonight. All right. There you go. That's Luke Wilson from Team Owen Wilson. They are on the Hawks plus nine and a half. Nine and a half is the number. Nine and a half Love is that the number. Duty. Yeah, Doogie hooked you up with the extra half point yeah. just before At one point, it was eight and a half. I know. I like, How happy are you? You didn't have to hear any tremendous information today. Thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> I am. A, I, 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 I've been worried. Hey, ball Triggering. don't lie. I've been Triggering. worried that we're going to hear the glass breaking and oh. Al's brother would storm into the studio at some point. It hasn't yeah. happened. What did he say before he left? He said, well, he. Something he, about red zone defense? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. He spewed some <laughs> stuff. He's like, when Luke makes the pick, I think I know what pick he's going to make. Tell him this. I'm like, I, I, I can't. Yeah. I can't I remember that. that Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> he said something about red zone defense. Maybe. Sure. Yes. Listen, yes. when when the Hawks get the ball in this first half and and they run a wide zone to Zach Charbonnet, our guy, <laughs> our guy, and he lowers his shoulder on somebody. Oh, oh, he's here! Oh, oh, my God. God. I was just joking. <laughs> He's hiding. He's hiding. Oh, All right. He's hiding back there because he can't <laughs> face me. I want to point some out before he even says anything. Notice since the massive slump they're in, uh, where's Hayes? Where's Al's bro? We don't see him no more. They're quiet they're avoiding on Twitter. You. They avoiding are. You. I'm not avoiding nothing. Not avoiding anything. <laughs> yeah, you're avoiding. I'm good. I, I, did you make your pick yet? I missed it. Of yes. course. And you know who I took. You're rolling with your Hawks. Of course. You? Dude, you got the fog. You've got the Seattle fog. I can't wait for Dallas to 
get in there Super tonight and just crush your Hawks, man. That's not happening. Here's the red zone stat you were oh. referring to, fellas, okay? <laughs> that's that's the big difference. No, I'm telling you, that's the big difference tonight. You look at Dallas in the top red zone offense in the NFL. Seattle, fourth worst red zone defense. When Seattle moves that ball, they're going to score. You look at Seattle, Geno Smith, he's got a bum arm. I don't think they're going to muster up a lot of points. <laughs> Another arm. blow up, boys. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> that, that is, that is absurd. Absurd. Al brother. Everything you said is dude, totally just means nothing. But <laughs> it was great presentation. Nine it and was. a half, Alice, bro. Be honest. Did if it you move? were picking is it nine game. or eight and a half? Nine, nine and a half. Nine, nine and a half. Nine and a half. half. Moved again. Yeah, that means a lot of people like the Cowboys. That's oh, great. A lot of more teams. Yes. Well, let's see. <laughs> Pierre LeBron is hammering take, Dallas. You would take Dallas to cover tonight if it was your pick. 100% confirmed. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> that's, right. why, that's why you're 4 2 and 1. You're it's barely 500. <laughs> it's a great good record. Re- that not in this league. <laughs> Four two and one doesn't do it in this league. Now uh, we'll see what happens tonight, boys. <laughs> a lot of animosity. That's Al's brother. That's Luke Wilson. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate we appreciate it, guys. it. Lots of overdrive still to come. Corona, Corrado, Koliakovo will play some pigeon or peacock. A staple on the first up radio show. Well, Joe what Bowen and Jim <laughs> Ralph. You want? You can Pick stick around if you want to. Pick a bird. Right. You're always welcome. This is Overdrive TSN 1050. Live on TSN4. A pigeon is someone you don't respect. Maybe a bit of a bench warmer. Pigeon. You're all pigeons. Ah! Filthy, filthy pigeons. Or peacock. I can, you can't keep me cooped up in here, okay? I am a peacock. You gotta let me fly. Ah! He just, he just call himself a peacock. We're back on Overdrive. You're listening on TSN 1050, watching on TSN 4. I'm Aaron Karolnik. That's Frank Corrado. That's Carlo Koliakovo. Coco, you and I host a morning show on this on this radio station called First Stop, and we play a little segment called Pigeon or Peacock. Yes, we and do. And if you don't know what a pigeon is, it's a loser, a deadbeat, a failure. Someone who just deserves to get chirped. Mm-hmm. And a peacock is someone who's the exact opposite, someone who stands out for, for positive reasons. So... This game is something we play where I give a take and you guys will decide, am I a pigeon or a peacock for that take? Ready to go? I love calling you a pigeon. Yes, and my guess is you will call me a pigeon for this first take that I have, which is, yes, Tiger Woods was three over today at the Hero World Challenge, but (laughs) he will win again on the PGA Tour. Am I a pigeon or a peacock? You're a pigeon for saying that. Um, You know how I feel about Tiger Woods. I love watching Tiger Woods play. I think it's great for golf. I just don't think he has the endurance left in him to win a four-day PGA tournament. He said he's going to play once a month. What guys play on the PGA Tour once a month and win tournaments? So it's an absolute pigeon take. You're a pigeon for believing it. And I'm going to stand by my peacock take and say that he won't win again on the PGA Tour. Frank, that was Help harsh. Me out here. That was harsh. Sub Taylor Fusion, man. Come I'm, on. I'm going to. I'm going to tell you what. That is a peacock take because when Tiger Woods, when Tiger Woods won the Masters in 2019, there was a great compilation of all the people that said Tiger was done and he was never going to win again. You know what all those people looked like? Pigeons. And we're not (laughs) counting Tiger out anymore. Yeah, he's playing once a month, but there were years where Tiger wasn't playing very many tournaments. He would show up for the big ones and he would play and perform. He's walking better. I'm not optimistic about it, no, but it's still a peacock take. Thank you very Joe much. Joe from the bridge put a uh, board up before about how many tournaments he's played, how many times he's won. If he's listening, can he put that up again? Yeah, well, I believe like he's played eight times in the last three years. But Has he made the cut any of those yeah, tournaments? Yeah, he made four of the, or the last Here's five the cuts. Absolutely, he's making cuts. It's he's won three up. tournaments in the last five years. That's right. Just needs one. Just needs one. Lots of time. Hey, That's me and Sub-tale him got a fusion. wager. You want in on the wager, too? Yeah. No problem. I'll take that. All right. All right. Welcome to my team, <laughs> Frank. We can, we can split the wings yes. and split the Easiest glory. Easiest money I've ever made. Take number two. The Toronto Maple Leafs will acquire at least two top six D-men prior to the March 8th trade deadline frank peacock big time that's gonna happen soon i don't even think you wait till the deadline to make that happen there's a real sense of urgency with this team and we're gonna see as the games go on here like how desperate they are on the blue line and how much they're gonna need some help but that's a peacock take they're gonna they needed someone before the season started now they have some injuries they need to weather that storm and i think that puts a little more urgency as far as getting a deal done as soon as possible yeah i'm gonna side with frankie in this one and say it's a peacock take too just because and i actually think there could be more than two defensemen that they acquire 
I think when you looked at the way their defense looked at the beginning of the season with Mark Giordano in there, it's hard to expect Mark Giordano as a 40-year-old to play 82 games. So that's one guy you would bring in. You would need an extra guy there because your top four was already slim. Now you've eliminated Klingberg from the equation. So I think they should actually add three guys to solidify their They their did top last six. year. Again, remember, Shen, McCabe, Gustafson. Now, Gustafson wasn't a top six well, guy. You think Gustafson would have been a nice guy they could well, have kept around? For less than a million? Well in New York. He, he, oh, my he, God. He is he ever? And I, I just wonder, like, where he'd slot Lilligren. Like, is Connor Timmons a guy in you a could actually... In perfect world, Lilligren is, is on your third pair. Yes. But... This year would have been a great year for him to kind of platform himself into a top four guy, but he's not getting that runway because he's hurt. But at least you know, at worst case scenario, he's going to come back. He's going to be a solid third pair option for you. Might give you some better minutes than that. But if you can add, like, if you can add two legit guys, that's why, like, last night on Jay's show, I said, you got to get Tanev and Zadorov in the same deal. And, and that would really help the team. But... It's going to be but difficult to make you, that happen. Can you trust Calgary to move those guys right now? That's a, like, well, right? and why do they want to move those right. guys now when they can hold on to them and maybe get a little bit more for those yeah, guys? Yeah, there's that, and there's probably at least a half dozen other teams around the NHL that are looking for the exact same, same thing. A Everyone's of, looking for defense, man. Everybody, Vancouver every just cleared year. Guys, and Calgary's, Calgary's one point out of a playoff spot in the West. So I know. They're in the same position Toronto's in, essentially, <laughs> essentially. at this very moment. Well, yeah. A few Do points I, I think I think Toronto's a better team than Calgary. Yeah, what I'm saying is that both kind of are on the outside looking in right now. That could change very quickly. Would you guys welcome back the addition of the Russian bear, Ilya Labushkin? I think he's hurt right now. Is he? I think he's hurt right now I, as well. I mean, what, you're going to play with Morgan Riley again? No, but he's, he's a better player to add into your group of six than what they Maybe have. Maybe like for kind of a placeholder during the season. Do I want to go into the playoffs? A penalty with killer, a physical Labushkin? guy. I guess that is something. Here, you want, you want a bonus? P- Pigeon or Peacock? I do. Matt Dumba, Toronto yes. Maple Leaf. Pigeon Toronto, or yeah. Peacock move? Peacock well, move. the word was that that's who they wanted, right? Prior to signing Klingberg, it was Dumba. They just couldn't come to an agreement with regards to salary. Now that salary is not necessarily a big part of the equation. He signed for the same money in, well, in Arizona. Yes. Well, like a shade yes. under $4 million. But I wonder with Dumba if it's the same thing as Klingberg, where different kind of players... But you're almost Makes falling sense. in love with what the player was at his peak, and he maybe is not there right now. Right. So maybe it's similar. Or to maybe there's in just the, the realization that he's just not that player anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and you just you settle for the player that he is, and and Dumba, the player that he is, still. I don't look at Dumba as, as an offensive guy. I look at him as just a steady guy that brings a different element to your back. Which is exactly wonder, what they need. And too. I wonder if he looks at himself that way. You know, like sometimes you're like, man, I used to be this. Yeah. I know it can be that. There's but a lot of guys in the league that it's still hard. Think that. It's hard to come to grips with that, right? Yeah. Okay, a couple more. Emmett Smith is the only Dallas Cowboy to win the NFL MVP. My take is that Dak Prescott will become the second Dallas Cowboy to win the NFL MVP. The Am I a pigeon take. or a peacock? Pigeon take. Look, Dak's having a great year, but we just spent the whole segment with Luke Wilson talking about Dak's success against some of the weaker opponents in the NFL. Until he can prove that he can do that in big games against the best teams in the league, Dak still has that that label of being a choker in big games and throwing picks, like throwing crazy. picks, game managing, you know, making smart decisions, stuff like that. I, I still think. I know we don't see this very often, but Christian McCaffrey, in my eyes, is the is the go-to number one guy right now if I had to pick MVP. Amazing value on FanDuel. I think he's still 30 to 1. Who's the leader right now? Is it J- J- definitely Jalen Hurts. Oh, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts right. after that big I'm, win they had. I'm, I'm right there with you. It, I think it's a it's a pigeon take, thinking that Dak Prescott is going to be the MVP. Obviously, he's going to be in the conversation, and that is warranted. But I look at what McCaffrey's doing week after week. The guy's a lock to get a touchdown every single it's like game. Minus three hundred now to score a touchdown. I know. Every and, game. I know. And it's it's so impressive the way like he gets yards after contact. Like he he really is. And I understand Sam Fran would be a very good team even without McCaffrey. But he just gives them that much more. He's been that that much. Uh, of an impressive player, and even Jalen Hurts like is in that conversation. So I, I don't think it's appropriate to say that Dak Prescott is going to be the MVP. The Detroit Red Wings taking on the Chicago Blackhawks tonight. Patrick Kane will not play. Expected to play at some point next week. My take: Patrick Kane will score at a point per game pace Ooh. for the Red Wings this season. Buddy, right? I I love Patrick Kane. I hope he does really well. But I believe that is a pigeon take because even if he's 0.75 points per game. It's going to be really good, and you're going to be happy with the production you get. But point per game is, that'll be tough. Coming off the injury, like not not only the time off, 
that he's catching up now and getting up to speed. But the fact that he had an injury, thats it's been so rare for hockey players to come back from that injury and have success. So, pigeon take. I want to say Peacock on this because I, I, I want Patrick Kane to do well. I want him to reignite um, with Alex DeBrinket, get him to score 40 plus a year, him, you know, feeding cross ice passes like he touched on during his, uh, his presser yesterday. But this is a guy that still has to find his, his spot on the Detroit Red Wings. I know they want him to play along DeBrinket, but what if it doesn't work? And, you know, you, the guys coming off of two seasons right now that have been mediocre. I think this is a pigeon take just because I don't want to put that expectation. on. I don't think he's putting that expectation on himself. I think he's just worried about being a positive impact on a team that's in a playoff spot, helping them get to a playoff spot and being a, a point producer, but not putting the expectation on him to be a point. He producer did say, he did say yesterday on the NHL and TNT that he feels better than he did two years ago. And yeah. he scored 90 to 92 points two years ago. Yeah. So how, how good is it going to be? Like if Detroit is in the playoffs, the league is a much better place when Detroit is a good team. The Rangers are a really good team. Like, how it's, amazing would it be if it's a Toronto Detroit first round playoff awesome. matchup? That'd be awesome. Be amazing. It would yeah. be. It would By be. the way, on your Tiger take, I got a text from a pro golfer. You want me to read it? This is a yes. professional golfer. Yes. Tiger's swing is more consistent than ever, and if he stays healthy, he could easily win and could win a major. Not a U.S. Open, though. Get out of here. Not Come a U.S. Open. That right. is a professional. Everybody's saying that about Tiger Woods. You know what you are? You're Al's brother oh. talking to Luke Wilson about football. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, his swing is great. He's going to play great golf. We're talking about winning golf tournaments. Sub a guy, fusion. A guy that is going to play once a month on the PGA Tour. We're going to say he's going to win golf tournaments. I, is, thank you. Absurd. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot wait. When Tiger wins, we will just play these clips again and again on this station. I'll eat crow. Yeah. I'll eat crow if I'm wrong. You'll eat more than crow. But I'll tell you that. Sure. I don't know what that means. What are you going to eat? What are you going to eat? I'm going to give you $500. Yeah, I'll give you $500 <laughs> All right. if Tiger uh, is not able to win. You'll be but, collecting. Yes. And I got, a long, I got a long runway here. Tiger could play until he's, you know, 75 years old. And then I'll pay you out. But you might be paying me out a lot sooner. This is Overdrive here on TSN 1050, TSN 4. We've got some great guests coming up. Joe Bowen, Jim Ralph, live from Scotiabank Arena. Ron Francis, Hockey Hall of Famer, the general manager of the Seattle Kraken. He'll join us just after 6.30 as we continue here on TSN 4 and TSN 1050. Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog will be part of the TSN Hockey Panel ahead of the Leafs and the Seattle Kraken tonight. You can watch it on TSN 4 following this fine radio show where I'm hosting with my man Frank Corrado, Carlo Koliakovo, I am Aaron Korolnik, and Chris Johnston, TSN Hockey Insider, emphasis on Hockey Insider, <laughs> mm -hmm. had a tweet just moments ago that reads, Shohei question mark, Otani question mark. What are you trying to tell us, CJ? I, I don't, know if, Chris, I don't know if Chris Johnson has baseball sources as well as hockey sources. You see sometimes like Shams Sharania has stuff on the NFL or different sports. He's a basketball guy. You remember when he tried to break the NFL draft? He got the first two or three right, and then he got the fourth one yeah. wrong, and then he stopped And then he just gave up. <laughs> I don't know what Chris Johnston is intimating. Well, I think I do. I think he's intimating that the Jays and Shohei Otani, and there, there's been a lot there's of buzz a lot today. Of news there's today. a lot of buzz. A lot of buzz. Rumor mill is hot on so, Otani, but we don't know anything, but maybe Chris Johnston does. On our show... First up that we do every Monday to Friday in the mornings on this station. Six we to had 10, Buster maybe. Olney on. And Buster Olney commented on the Shohei Otani situation. And as it's quoted here on the TV, he says, he knows where he wants to go. Let's be honest. Shohei Otani is probably going to end up as an L.A. Dodger. For sure. You guys are such pessimists. Chris Johnston is giving us a very positive nugget of news here. If you're Shohei... Some speculation. Well, I, I'm buying it. I'm with CJ. Carlo, you're 100% right. That guy, he holds the cards. He knows exactly where he wants to go and what's he, what he wants to do. So he can leverage other teams and get the Dodgers to come up in price or whatever he really wants and then get what he wants in the end. But just imagine, Frank, the Jays got Otani. Whatever it costs, it would be amazing. Million. It'd be it one would of the be. great days in the history of Toronto sports. Yes, without any—I mean, this is a city that you know, 1967 with the Stanley Cups, 
And we know um, World Series, course, the World Series, 92, 93, championship, 2019. Cups. Argos won a bunch Argos of great, great cups. cups. But Shohei Otani, the Toronto Blue Jays getting the best player in the sport, international superstar. We would become, in this city, the focus of the baseball world, not only for oh, a moment, yeah. but for the entire season. Think about how much we talked about the crappy L.A. Angels all year last year. Oh, they stink. They have trout. They can't figure out they anything had with Otani. Major League Baseball MVPs. In five of the last six years? Yeah, and they don't make the playoffs every Trout, year. They're so, they're so bad. They're embarrassed. They have not made the playoffs. And so let's ask Frankie this question. We asked this question mm-hmm. on our show the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. What's a better chance of happening? Tiger winning a golf tournament <laughs> or, or Shohei Otani. Otani signing with the Blue Jays? Well, I did just say that Tiger was going to get <laughs> gonna go with yeah, golf you got it. And I said the Jays aren't getting Otani, so I guess I got to stick with my answer. But Tiger's going to win a golf tournament. The Chris Johnston tweet may you know, he might be, just be he might just be a fanboy. Is he tr- is he trolling? I don't know if he's trolling. He just might be excited, getting wrapped up in the excitement about Duke, it. Dude, he maybe send CJ a, ta- a text and be like, "So anything we should be monitoring here with Otani?" He broke the, the Patrick Kane news. He did. Yeah. So on they, our show. Are they, do they share the same agent? It's, Kane a, and it's, it's a crossover day. First up, crossover with Overdrive, and yeah. CJ is crossing over as a NWO baseball day. insider. That's right. That's NWO right. Um, new maybe, world maybe, order. maybe we'll ask Ron Francis if he's heard anything down at Scotiabank Arena yeah. about Tani. Maybe he's in the building tonight. Who knows? I'm sure knows? he is. It'd be a good game. Toronto and Seattle. You can yeah. hear it on TSN 1050. You can watch it on TS, TSN 4 again. The Overdrive Trio will be part of the panel with James Dutty. We're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to Jim Ralph and Joe Bowen joining us on the other side, plus Ron Francis, the GM of the Seattle Kraken, as our three approaches on Overdrive next.